Hey there viewers, welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. Got the 2008 Dodge Avenger. So you got the big 3.5 customer complaint, intermittent slow crank. We'll go out to get it in the morning. Crank slow, sometimes they have to throw a jumper pack on it. Uh, they assumed that the battery is going dead. So they brought it here uh, to another shop. They already put the starter in it. Uh, they put a new battery in it and seemed to think that the problem still exists. So they wanted me to check it for a battery draw, which I did yesterday and I didn't see any. It was only around you know 20 milliamps, something somewhere around there, pretty low. Nothing certainly that's gonna kill the battery overnight. I see they've cleaned up the ground wire up here. And like I mentioned, they changed a few components. However, I think we have a pretty basic problem of voltage drop. There are lots and lots of great videos on the World Wide Web on the YouTubes of voltage drop. I believe Scanner Danner covers voltage drop uh, pretty heavily and can explain it way better than I can. I always explain to people like this when we're using our voltmeter, all we're doing is looking for potential difference. When we go to the negative side of the battery and we come over to the positive side, we're looking at the potential difference between those two points, which is measured in voltage. So this is 12.48 volts, and you can see it up there. So 12.48 volts of differential <laughs> between this stud and that stud. So if we keep that in mind, if we just look at our voltmeter as measuring pressure differences or potential differences between two points, it's pretty helpful when you're doing voltage drop because if we measure this negative, and we go down to the battery and we measure that negative down there, what are we gonna see here? Should be zero volts, right? In a perfect world, it would be because there should be no difference between this negative and that negative. However, our world's not perfect, as some of us know, as hopefully most of you know. And there's variables here. So when you're measuring voltage drop, anytime there is a component in the, in the circuit, there's going to be some voltage loss at that component. You know, even your conductor, even your wire, there's, you know, there's, that's why we can't just take that piece of four gauge wire and just run it indefinitely for miles and miles and miles and expect, you know, 12 volts out the other end because there's a certain amount of resistance in that wire, uh, just like there is at connections, fuses, relays, terminals, switches, any, any component in the circuit, there's going to be a certain amount of voltage loss across it. So now that we've spoke about that, let's have a look at what this car is doing. And I'll tell you what I think the problem is and we'll kind of prove it out. So for our first check, we're gonna leave our uh, leads hooked up like they are. And the positive lead, the negative lead. Now this car, as many of you know, has the battery down in the fender liner. So we need to make a lot of our checks right here if we can. So that's where those leads are gonna be hooked up. Try to find a spot without a glare so we can do this. Initially, let's just turn on the headlights. So there, I turned on his high beams. That's the only thing on. And I dropped right down our min value of 11.4 volts, but holding about 11.7. Headlights are back off. I'm gonna go key on. So key on drops down to 11.8. Oops, let me shut the radio off. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, crank it here for you. Look at that. Look at that minimum voltage, 5.9 it dropped down to. Okay, looks like it's charging, 14 and a quarter volts. I'm gonna go ahead and shut that back off. Oops, get the key shut off correctly here, there we go. Didn't really bounce back too much, 11.11. .11. Go key back on, we're gonna crank it again. Yeah, so our minimal voltage was almost six volts, so that's way too low. All right, so now that we have that, that's our baseline testing it at those uh, two test points. Some of you are gonna disagree with this next part, uh, but that's okay. We all have differences of opinions. We're gonna take our, um, how you wanna do this? We're gonna take our negative lead. We're gonna turn this into my probe. So it's just a screwdriver. Obviously, you know, we have a connection here. This is fiberglass. And I'm going to reach down here. And I wanna stick that right on the top, right in the middle of that battery terminal. So we're gonna be just touching right into some fresh lead. It's a top post battery. And I've taken my screwdriver here 
right down into that negative post. Let me grab this uh, meter there. I guess we can leave it right there. So we have 12.4 volts at the battery negative terminal. Key on, 12.11. Let's uh, reset our min-max values here. So we can kind of have the same type of test. So key's still on, we're at 12.2. only drop down to 8.82 we usually don't like seeing them drop down you know below 9 volts but interesting we have 13 volts charging right there okay I thought we had uh, 14 and a half or so at the other terminal let's go out here and try this so we're 13 volts let me make darn sure I've got a good connection down here and I do so we're measuring 13 volts at the battery. We're gonna move our negative lead from here to here. And now all of a sudden we're charging 14 volts. Move our negative lead back to the negative post on the battery. Make sure we have a good connection. Oops. Oops, said your brain surgeon. Make sure we have a good connection. And we've got 13 volts. Pretty interesting, right? So negative there, negative here. We go from 13 to 14 volts. What's that tell us? We have one volt of voltage loss between here and the battery. Now that can be on the negative side or the positive side. You can have voltage drop on either side. We're on the negative, so let's do a quick voltage drop check on it. So remember, when we're just checking potential difference, we wanna know what's the difference between this negative terminal and that negative terminal, or that positive terminal and this positive terminal, either way. So we're gonna clip on here, and there is our one volt of voltage loss right there, 0.99 kind of flips up close to one volt there from negative to negative so we're dead center of the terminal of the battery and then we're on this stud and we're there's our one volt of voltage loss and folks this doesn't have a lot of current running through it right now um, who knows what this will do when we when we crank it I, I suppose for example we could we could do that let me shut the engine off here shut off obviously that's funny even with uh, <laughs> with very minimal current flow there's still one volt difference between these two points pretty interesting let me move our graph here oops we're gonna get this kind of up in the middle I'm gonna put some time on the screen let's put 30 seconds on it I'll get this armed on the pause button. Uh, our min max has been reset. I'm gonna go in and crank it, and then we're gonna pause it and have a look at it. All right, key on. And you cranked. We're gonna hit pause. And a volt and a half, so 1.5 volts lost on the uh, negative side here. So pretty wild. Um, now becomes the point of, so we're from the center terminal, or the center of the battery to this stud right here. And this is where it can get a little tricky because you wanna pinpoint you know, the voltage loss. Is the voltage being lost in the cable? Is it lost in the connection? Is it lost, you know, like let's say this is the battery terminal or the, you know, the terminal sticking out of the battery and then this is the terminal that clamps on. You gotta measure from the center of the battery just to that connection, any part of the connection along the way to find out, you know, what is it? Is it, you know, cruddy connection? Is it in the cable? Is it, you know, where, where are we losing this voltage? And that's, you know, your next uh, step that you would have to do. We're going to grab this old fashioned laptop, the OG laptop. I want to make sure you guys understand this battery plus minus. Okay. 
voltage drops can be carried out and should be carried out on both sides. However, we knew that we were missing one volt and then we found it just testing the negative side. Therefore, doing a voltage drop test on our positive side would be, uh, it would be irrelevant. We, w we don't even need to do it. But what I was getting at, yeah, see you, John. What I was getting at is our test was made right here right dead center of that stud. That's where your voltage drop testing should be made. A common mistake is let's say this is your battery terminal. You know, it's clamped on there with the bolt. Your wire comes over here, goes to the ground. Some people carrying out voltage drop tests will hook their meter right onto that terminal. Now that's not the proper way to do it because we've seen in some cases, just like in this case here, if we did that, we would not see voltage drop. In this case, I'm gonna, I'll just let the cat out of the bag. The voltage drop is in the battery terminal. So if we checked from dead center of the terminal, the battery terminal to the clamp, if we measured the voltage here, we would see one volt in those two points. And I know that because I've done it, but I can't show you guys because it's, it's hard to see down there and I'm just doing it with, uh, with the screwdriver. But my point is, is when you're making a voltage drop test, start in the middle of the battery, then, you know, if you've identified the voltage drop from, from the center of the battery to, you know, chassis ground, you know, and you've got, you know, one volt of voltage drop there, now you gotta figure out where. So center of the battery, then the terminal, then center of the battery to this connection, then center of the battery, you know, to the stud, to the nut, to the wire, and then you're gonna start really breaking that system down to find out where are we actually losing this voltage loss. Or you can just go willy-nilly, take off all your grounds, as they say, <laughs> and clean everything, um, which is a big fat waste of time when you can 100% pinpoint uh, diagnose it. So I hope this video makes some sense. Checking voltage loss. I'm gonna call the shop, they're gonna come pick up the car and they're gonna, you know, fix it themselves now. Even though we didn't experience, you know, the slow crank, we could easily see that, you know, we're losing one volt there. When we're cranking, it's dropping down below six volts. And then the other part of voltage loss, even, you know, that we have voltage drop from the negative here during cranking, we could also see that when the system was charging, that we had over 14 volts here, but only 13 volts there, so. That means, you know, our battery's not going to uh, charge to its full potential with the alternator and it can cause a lot of issues. At any rate, folks, do your basic checks. I feel like I owe you one. Let's see. I just don't want to take the fender liner and everything out of this car. Let's see. Enhance. Enhance. So you see what they did there? So we were making our checks and it's not really focusing here. There we go. Uh, we were making our checks dead center of that terminal, but look where they clamped on that cable. You see how that's all rusty and crappy? That's where our voltage loss is. I don't want to uh, take the whole thing apart just to prove it to you, but you're gonna have to take my word for it, folks. We did the test. I used the long probe and we got in there. That's enough jibber jabber, folks. We're gonna leave it at that. I hope you guys understand voltage drop. If not, go online check out some videos, learn it, love it, use it, do it. It is not just for high consumption circuits like starters and alternators, it's for everything. Any circuit on your car that has current flowing through it, you can measure voltage drop on. From the beginning to the end of that circuit, you need to know circuit design, how many fuses, connectors, relays, switches, any of that stuff that's going to affect your voltage drop. Um, where is that in the in the circuit because that's going to help you with some of your testing your different test points you know you go from here to here it's good from here to here you know you keep moving down until you find where that voltage drop is just like we start in the center of the battery on this one then to the connector then to up here you know you have to be methodical about it to find out where the problem actually exists Rule number one with voltage drop I guess you'll have to know is there has to be current flow the circuit has to be turned on if we check this car completely shut down, modules all turned off, we do that same test, it's gonna test perfect, 0.00, .00 volts. But that test is, is irrelevant because there's no current flowing through that circuit. So no current flow, no voltage drop. That's all you need to know. Use this in place of an ohmmeter. Ohmmeters are worthless for testing like this. It would test perfect, 0.0, .0 ohms. 
you have to do the voltage drop test, folks. That's it. Drop a comment, question, concern, and Steve Facebook. You guys know where to find us. Just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.